following episode has a very special guest writer, K.D. Burr of Southern Grimoire. Please stick around after the episode to learn more about her podcast, her store, and so much more. Johnny, hello. I've been waiting anxiously to meet you. Yes, ma'am. As have I. Though I am very confused by the odd formalities of these situations. Nothing seems to make sense in this... place. I expect Doc hasn't told you much about me, but I already know a lot about you. Enough to know that you're... special. So I've heard. And what about you? Are you special? That depends on who you ask, I suppose. But Doc and I go back quite a long time. We met in 1834. (sighs) Such a glorious and romantic time that was. Sit, let me tell you a story about the great fire of New Aurelius. In a little over nine days, Morston, Texas and its surrounding areas were devastated by three Category 5 hurricanes. This anomaly has meteorologists. There's just simply no proof of these so-called scarred monsters. Reporting live, I'm... Matt, it's only getting worse. Where are you? I can't do this alone. I'll show you what real power is! (laughs) You are my prize of the night. Uh, You are an evil one. (laughs) You have no idea how devilish I can get. (laughs) Evil has reigned unchecked in this city for far too long. I will strike down those who seek to flood this great plain with darkness. Why? Why have you finally returned now? For it's all about you. Are we nearly there yet, Delia? We should be in a dam. It's not too far. And how did you hear of this place? My uncle is friends with the shop owner, madame. He assured me they have the rarest gems and fabrics in all of New Aurelius. Good. Nothing else will do for our first soiree. He was so excited to show off the new wing of the manor. Another dull party full of smug doctors and their simpering wives. Couldn't you just die? At least the wallpaper looks nice. Yes, madame. It is beautiful. Here we are, Madame Vandeneau. Allow me to help you out. Thank you, Rivers. My pleasure, madam. Rivers? Well, it's not much to look at now, is it? La Cobo Moa. The dead crow. Is owned by a Haitian woman, Madame Asefi. She has friends all over the world, and they send her the most fabulous things. Come along then, Delia. We'll see for ourselves, won't we? It's so dark in here, I can hardly see a thing. Hello? Hello, is there anyone there? You're a long way from the quarter, Miss Bella. I am, madame. But I have brought you my mistress. This is Madame Dorian Knox Longino. Pleased to meet your acquaintance, Madame Asefi. My husband and I are holding a party this weekend, and I want to look my very best. I've been assured that you have the rarest jewelry in the city. Oui, I have that, and more. Come to the back, madame.
Here we are. Take your pick, madam. Rubies as red as blood. Emeralds rich and green. Polished obisan, blacker than the devil himself. Why, these are exquisite. Well done, Delia. A fine recommendation. Would you just look at these pendants? And these settings, these are so unusual. It almost looks as if they're made of... Bone. Human bone. Where on earth does one find human bone? Here in New Aurelius, there is a doctor of sorts that I work with on occasion. Certainly not a local doctor. My husband is a surgeon here. We know nearly every physician in the city. I'd be very surprised. Nothing in the city should surprise you, Madame Larenta Rowe. If you prefer pieces set in silver or gold... No. No, I'm quite partial to the bone. I'm sure no one else will have anything quite like it. But how to choose? Madame, look at this. Oh my word, that stone is nearly the size of an egg. Couldn't you just see that hanging from my neck, Delia? Asefi, what kind of stone is this? That is an Ethiopian opal. The largest I have ever come across. But I must warn you, it is cursed. <laughs> cursed? What nonsense. Curses are not nonsense, madame. At least, not in this part of New Aurelius. Pardon my saying so. And what is this alleged curse? Men have stolen this gem. Fought over it. Kill for it. It is set in the bone of the last man who shed blood for it. Whoever owns this gem will have a cursed life. They will never truly find rest. This is a gem for the wicked. In which case, I suppose, you might be the appropriate owner for it. I beg your pardon. I know what to do in your attic, Madame Larentaro. <laughs> if you know what I do, madam, then you know it's better for you to keep your mouth shut. I'm not frightened of shriveled old women in dusty shops. Pay the woman for the opal, Delia. I'll be in the coach. We have a party to prepare for. Yes, madame. This is the most beautiful party. The canapes are sublime. You, you old so and so. What's this wine? Fine stuff, my boy. Glad you're enjoying it, sir. It's Tuscan. Gift to my aunt. Pardon me, I must say hello to Mrs. Lodford. Hello, darling. I feel like I haven't seen you all night. Have you met Dr. Childers and his wife, Cynthia? They just moved here from Philadelphia. I have not. Pleasure to meet you both. And you as well. We were just discussing the ethics of selective breeding. We use it with dogs, so why not with people? I probably couldn't provide you with much of an opinion, Doctor. I'm only a surgeon. I merely restore things to their previous form. My wife, on the other hand, is a bit of a scientist. You, Laura! Disgraceful! When will you find time to sew? Funnily enough, Doctor, my experiments require quite a bit of sewing from time to time. Experiments? I'm deeply interested in transformation. Combining things to make them better. More efficient. More complex. Nothing that should be discussed in polite conversation. Far too technical. Trust me when I say my wife's experiments would be of little interest to our party guests. But I find her brilliant. If not a little mad. <laughs> Pardon me. Is that not your woman, servant? Why, yes, it is. Pardon me. Delia, what is it? Madame, some of the guests in the land had approached me. They can hear. Well, the music isn't quite loud enough. Thank you, Delia. I'll deal with it at once. Excuse me. 
Pardon me. Do excuse me. your mouth this racket you ought to be ashamed you better shut your mouth or I'll sew it shut we'll see how difficult it is to sip your gruel then and you look at the mess you've made all this blood you'd better find a way to tidy up quick or I'll cut off your other arm if you make one more sound I swear to God I'll stitch your heads together Goodness, Delia, you nearly startled me. My apologies, madame. There is a guest who would like to make your acquaintance. He's waiting out on the veranda. Who is he? He didn't say, but he... Well, he's most unusual. To be perfectly frank, madame, he frightens me. Frightens you? Why? Well, he... Well, you'll just have to see for yourself, madame. Show me to him. Here we are. May I present to you, my mistress, Madame Laurier Nance Langenon. And this is... Uh, my colleagues usually call me Doc. Doc, a pleasure to meet you. You may leave us, Delia. Walk with me, Doc. Why, wow, that's a very beautiful necklace you wear, my dear. The stone is so full of life. Do you find that you feel cursed? <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Are you a Cephi's mysterious doctor? <laughs> Perhaps. I've been very interested to meet you. I'm intrigued by your surgical experiments. My husband Hugh is the surgeon. I merely dabble. Oh, don't be modest, Laurie. Nancy, please. Laurie is so formal. Only people I dislike call me Laurie. What do you know of my experiments? Oh, I know enough. I know that you broke a slave's limbs and reset them to resemble a crab's. I know that you've transferred the limbs of the dead to the living. I know that you've successfully kept a decapitated head alive for nearly 24 hours. I... I was so careful with... How do you know all this? I know much about you, Nancy. I've been watching you, and I have great and terrible plans for you. Plans that would put your unique gifts to good use. I, I don't even know you, sir. Whenever you're ready to leave this life behind, whenever that day may come, I'll be waiting. You will not be happy living out your days quietly, wheeling your current in your attic. I can give you more. I sense your husband is looking for you. I bid you farewell. Wait! Doc, I... Gloria? My dear, I've been looking for you everywhere. You all right? Who's that strange man? Gloria? <clears throat> I'm fine, darling. Thank you. That was just another doctor. This whole place is crawling with doctors. What a bore. Ugh, 
Do be quiet, or I'll have to retie that gag. Do you fancy having a rag soaked in turpentine stuffed in your mouth? Because that would probably do the trick. Blast it all, I can hardly see a thing up here. Dark, drafty, no room for my tools. If I could just... Do shut up! Gloria. 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 Finish whatever you're doing in there and wash off the stench of entrails. We're due at the Childers. Uh, whatever for? We're throwing a party. To thank us for showing such generosity and hospitality. To outdo us, more like it. A party for a party? What absolute nonsense. Tell them I'm ill. You are coming to this party, Gloria. Do not make me come in there and drag you out. <laughs> I'd love to see you try. Damn it, we are leaving in an hour, and you will be in the cabin with a smile on your face. Delia has drawn your back. Now come along. Of course, darling. Anything you say. Gloria. to smile, Loria. I am smiling. What more do you want from me? Grimacing. You're grimacing. You look pain through the entire conversation with Dr. Griffiths. Impossible. His mother's history of gastrointestinal ailments was such a riveting topic. Do excuse me, dear. There's someone I must say hello to. Loria. Good evening, Doc. Do you intend to spend the entire party alone, gazing pensively into the fireplace? I do enjoy a good fire. Powerful. Transformative. One could see much in the flames if they bothered to look closely enough. Not too closely, or they'll cease to see much of anything at all. True enough. You've been thinking about my proposition. I can hardly consider something I know nothing about. You know all you need to know. I offer more. More than all of this. <laughs> that doesn't set the bar very high, now does it? Eh, perhaps not. How's your latest experiment coming along? Not well. I couldn't lower the subject's body temperature after the transplant. He perished. Infection, I expect. Oh, shame. Perhaps if you had better working conditions. Imagine what you would be capable of. Indeed. Well, I suppose I should return to my husband. I'll be seeing you soon, Nancy. Enjoy the party. Help me undo these braids, please, Delia. Use the brush, not the comb. My head aches. How was the party, madame? You looked beautiful. It was dull, Delia. Much of the same. I can't bear another conversation about petticoat preferences. I'm sorry to hear that, madame. Was Dr. Londrina attentive to you, at least? You know he wasn't, Delia. But that unusual doctor was at the party. I don't know how you can talk to that man. He doesn't frighten me. Not much, anyway. He's... intriguing. 
He's offered me something I want very much. But it seems like he has so very much already, madame. These such superficial things, Delia. The house, the husband, the jewels. The doctor offers me purpose. I see, madame. In that case, I encourage you to make whatever decision suits you. Delia, how long have you worked for me? Four years this spring, madame. And you've never once questioned me. You've always been discreet. You've never shown your fear. Why is that? Speak frankly. Well, madame, it... It seemed the best way to stay alive. That it is. Smart girl, Delia. I want you to take this opal. Right now. Go and sell it. Keep the money for yourself and never return here. Never speak my name again, not to anyone. But, madame... Do it. Don't question me now. Is Dr. Lantano asleep? He is, madame. Then I've made my decision. Here, take the opal. Take it. Bring me that oil lamp before you go. Hurry now. Thank you, Delia. Well... Now be on your way. Go. Madame. I pray you, burn brightly and spread quickly. Well, my word. A blood-red coach. Who's ever seen such a thing? I thought it was fitting to carry you out of New Aurelius in style. How did you know I'd be here? How did you know what I'd choose? I've known since the first time we spoke. Come now, Nancy. There's much to do. Such great and terrible things. Tonight, we go head first into the storm. Prepare yourself. I guess it does, but no. Doc isn't interested in carnal affairs of that sort. I see. You said he told you a lot about me, but did he tell you about what I'm currently working on? No, he didn't. Immortality. <laughs> Doc already said he can give us that. No, I'm talking about never having to find another host body. Instead of essence transfer's painful process, you will be able to stay in the same body forever, and you will never get sick or age. <laughs> Johnny, you're serious. I am. If that's the case, then count me in, darling. I had my first and only essence transfer in 1847, and it was so painful. I've just gotten used to this young body, and I'm not looking forward to losing it. You won't. I will fix you, Nancy. You hear me? Nancy. You hear me? Nancy. Hey, Johnny. Sorry. I was just daydreaming. Are you okay? I'm fine. I was just thinking of the first time I met you. Really? Huh. <sighs> yeah. Which made me think of the first time I met Doc. The Great Fire. I remember the story. I also remember the flame in your eyes when you told it to me. Nancy, I know Doc appearing here yesterday must have brought a lot of feelings back in regard to the old hunt. But you know we were wrong. We just couldn't see it back then. We didn't see past him for what he really was. What he still is. I know. I know he manipulated us for his hive mind. I 
just get nostalgic sometimes. As do I. But you still seek redemption? Yes, of course I do. Then understand, the power will only come from you and forgiving yourself for your past. This redemption is not for any god or any man that thinks he is one. It's for ourselves and to enter the storm on our terms. But you need to forgive yourself first. You're not Madame Landrino anymore. And you haven't been for some time now. You're right. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Lady Luzian, your fire burns on. Always. <laughs> All elements of Cyberna Side are copyright 2018 by Atrium Dynamics unless otherwise stated. Any duplication of this production without the secured written consent of Atrium Dynamics is strictly prohibited. Please visit Cyrenicide.com for more details. New to the Dark Myths Collective, Southern Grimoire with K.D. Burr. Listen to your favorite village witch explore unsolved crimes. Few have heard of the Butcher of Oklahoma City, who earned his name for the gruesome way he disposed of his victims. Mysteries. Rumors and questions about the monstrous brothers persisted. It was agreed that the Carter's bodies should be exhumed and investigated, but their caskets were empty. Legends. The man was terrified to see the creature crawl out of the field and begin to sprint, running alongside his car at incredible speeds. He'd only heard of skinwalkers and his grandmother's stories. And haunted history. Castle Frankenstein was a real place in Germany, and in 1673, Johann Dippel was born there. Southern Grimoire with Katie Burr. Listen at southerngrimoire.buzzsprout.com dot com or on your favorite podcast platform <laughs> sounds like a good podcast well it is so you should check it out thanks for sticking around guys it's johnny southern grimoire is more than just a spooky podcast though it's now a curiosity shop she's selling marvels pieces of magic that's right your favorite village witch is offering pieces of magic, jewelry and decor, bones, specimens, unusual antiques, rare books, and so much more. Follow Southern Grimoire on Facebook or Instagram to learn more. Mention your favorite episode of Southern Grimoire and get 5% off your first order through KD. So check it out. This is kind of the eyesore format. I'm not going to be editing anything out of this because I want you guys to hear it straight from me. Southern Grimoire is an amazing show. Now, that promo, you might have recognized my voice in it. I lended it because I, I'm a fan of it. I'm a huge fan of the show. This is a wonderful individual. And if you haven't had a chance to check out her podcast, you really should. It's uh, If you're a fan of 
unexplained or lore or any kind of diving deep into the essence of what goes on, you're going to really enjoy her not fiction stories. These are heavily researched topics that she pours a ton of energy into. So please check out the show. Check out her new shop. Get you some bone, human bone, as she said with a Sefi. Such a great character. Now, this was the first time I had ever co-authored an episode with someone. And I say that not taking any credit. She was the heart of this episode. Everything in 1834, she brought to life. Those parties, again, a Sefi and her curiosity shop. <laughs> um, down to Delia, all of these characters, she just brought the life, the party goers. And it was so fun to engineer this episode and put it together and to write uh, her interactions with Johnny at the beginning and the end. And I look forward to working with her again with this Nancy Curette character that she's taken from just voicing to giving her a complete, full backstory. And I hope you really enjoyed this episode. And I think you'll really enjoy the passion that Katie brings to this podcasting platform. So thanks again, and we'll see you guys in two weeks.